WCC Commissioner Stu Jackson discusses Gonzaga's departure from the WCC, the future of the conference tournament, adding Oregon State and Washington State, and much more. You are Locked On Zags, your daily podcast on the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, y'all? Welcome into the Locked On Zags podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host and longtime Gonzaga podcaster, Andy Patton, here to bring you news and updates on all things Zag athletics. Today's episode of Locked On Zags is brought to you by Game Time. Folks, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College, and you will get $20 off your first purchase. Well, folks, for those of you who checked out the episode that came out on Saturday, we are we were live at WCC Media Day on Thursday. Myself, Zach Farmer, the host of the unofficial WCC Hoops podcast, a friend of the program. He and I had an opportunity to do about a two-hour live show. It was streamed on his channel. Check it out if you want to see the whole scope of our conversation. We spoke with Mark Few. We spoke with Graham E.K., Ben Gregg, and Nolan Hickman. We also spoke with Randy Bennett and three players from St. Mary's, Luke Barrett, Augustus Marcellonis, and Mitchell Saxon all throughout a two-hour live stream. And our last interview of that day was Stu Jackson, the commissioner of the West Coast Conference. And today on the show, that is what we are going to hear. We're going to hear the 20-minute, 15, 20-minute interview that we had with Stu Jackson. We're going to have it here on the show discussing all sorts of things related to the WCC, the additions of Oregon State and Washington State for the next co- next couple of years, how that came together, the conversations that were had behind the scenes to make that happen. We also have conversation about the the Gonzaga departing the conference, what that means for the WCC, Stu Jackson's reaction to that, and things of that nature. We also talk about Seattle U and Grand Canyon joining the WCC, the WCC's new media rights deal, and any future changes to that, discuss whether streaming services might end up being a part of a future media rights deal for the conference. And we talk about the Orleans Arena, the deal they have with that venue for the conference tournament, if there's going to be changes in that area as well. A really fun conversation with Commissioner Jackson, really enjoyed getting the opportunity to speak to him about this conference as we get prepared for the college basketball season here it is check it out how's uh media day been for you so far no it's been good you know it's uh been a great environment and a collaboration with the mountain west uh, this is the second year obviously we've done it it's been great for the student athletes for the coaches to you know to be here today to witness all the cross exchanges between players and coaches is kind of cool so yeah and it's, and it's also kind of almost like the not quite like the the tipping point of like we're almost basketball is almost here it's finally we have to see real games in a few weeks and i think for a lot of us fans it's like finally we we don't have we don't have to keep just talking about it we'll get to see it finally yeah no it's like happy media days you know <laughs> this is the beginning of it all and uh you know certainly every single year signals the beginning of someone's conference and same with us. I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, the big the big change right now in this conference is the additions of Oregon State and Washington State uh, as affiliate members uh, outside of, of football. Uh, and, you know, Washington State, a program that made the NCAA tournament last year, uh, Oregon State, a program that made the Elite Eight a couple of years ago, two tremendous basketball teams and two tremendous on, on the men's and women's side. Uh, and it just feels like it's a really great way to kind of elevate the, the level of basketball in this conference and and you know obviously everybody talks about gonzaga and st mary's uh, but having these two teams really i mean it just feels like such a big win for this conference how did that come together and how uh, how important is it for the wcc to to have these two brands uh, as part of the the conference for the short term yeah no the the genesis of them becoming affiliates of the conference really started uh, very innocently actually Uh, we had uh, you know when the shakeup of the pac-12 actually happened uh, we had reached out um, to a number of uh, you know institutions in Pac-12 and said, if you ever need a home for some of your sports, uh, we'd be willing participants. And we just kind of lied there. But then we got a call uh, from both schools saying that, hey, would you be interested in having three sports join? And we said, sure. You know, and my thought was at the time, and it really hasn't changed, is that any time that you're going to add power conference uh, members to your, you know, across all sports, it, it stands the chance of sort of enhancing your metrics and helping other schools get access to the NCAA tournament. Uh, but then as time went on, they called back and said, hey, we'd be interested in six sports. And at that point, I said, sure, but 
basketball he had played? <laughs> well, we don't know. We'll get back to you. <laughs> and uh, but sure enough, like a couple weeks later, they said, well, we're interested in having like nine sports, and then it became eleven sports, and we want to talk about basketball. And that's how it all came together. We're glad that it did. Um, you know, from my vantage point, I just think it really helps our league both competitively, um, you know, and metrically and across all those sports, and should prove well for us. And there's been a lot. Over, there've been a lot of changes over the last few years. Even just thinking about membership wise, I think I went back to was like when BYU was still here was at ten last year nine that we're back we're at eleven next year and then yeah. obviously the addition of Grand Canyon and Seattle next year goes up to thirteen. Just thinking about just like the construction of this conference and what it's going to look like, bas- at least on the basketball front, like the addition of those two. Like how much did Grant did the Grand Canyon and Seattle additions kind of get catapulted maybe by the Washington State and Oregon States or were those or those independent uh, conversations? Yeah, they were really independent for um, the simple reason that Oregon State and Washington State are, are affiliates and they're only yeah. with us temporarily, but our focus had been, still remains to continue to evaluate full-time members uh, to add to the conference. And for us, um, you know, getting Seattle and GCU uh, Grand Canyon was we felt just really a win for us and uh, so uh, again you know having 13 teams is going to be a little bit different for us next year it forces us into some key decisions with respect to how do we schedule what's that format going to look like and we don't know quite yet and even more importantly what's our uh, conference tournament going to look like Uh, so a lot of things to still be decided but they're all good decisions Mm -hmm. Commissioner Jackson speaks about Gonzaga's departure, what it means for the WCC, as well as potential changes to the conference tournament, that and more coming up in just a second. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor, LinkedIn Jobs. Folks, when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, which has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster, and they do it for free. And LinkedIn is not just another generic job board. They help you you hire the professionals that you cannot find anywhere else, even those who are not actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. And in a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users do not visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Lincoln also knows that small businesses are wearing so many different hats and they may not have the time or the resources to prioritize hiring. So Lincoln is constantly finding ways to make that process even easier. That includes launching a feature that helps you write job descriptions. So post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, folks, segment two, still any patents, still locked on Zags podcast, and we're still playing our conversation with WCC Commissioner Stu Jackson from Thursday's WCC Media Day in Las Vegas. Coming up, we're going to hear Stu's thoughts about Gonzaga's departure from the WCC, what that means for the conference going forward, as well as conversation about the conference tournament, what that might look like in the future, all coming up right now. Check it out. Yeah, that was, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what that conference tournament is, is going to look like. I did want to ask about uh, Seattle U, and, and I know people listening who listen to, to me know this, that I am an alumni of Seattle U. I know you're connected to Seattle U, and, and uh, a, a program that I'm, I'm really excited about their opportunity. I know this is a school that has really wanted to be in the WCC. They feel, you know, like a WCC school. I, you know, you look at the, the, the big cities on the West Coast is San Diego, L.A., San Francisco, Portland, Seattle, and it felt like that was kind of where we were missing a, a team. And, and, you know, Coach Victor's led this team to three straight 21 seasons, and, and it feels like a team that uh, I know they're not in it this year, but but going forward it just feels like an addition that's going to really uh, help continue to elevate uh, this conference in a way that, you know, a lot of people are going to talk about Grand Canyon, certainly, and their basketball success, but I, I think Seattle uh, is an under-the-radar addition, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see them in the WCC, and I'm sure uh, you're feeling – feeling similarly yeah i'd even go one step further i mean mm-hmm. seattle university belongs to the yeah WCC. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they really do it, certainly under the leadership as you mentioned with coach victor uh, mm-hmm. they've had some success mm-hmm. um you know in recent years and seem to be you know pointed in the right direction but you know as we as we look forward uh, you know with seattle you i i just think that uh, you know they're going to help bolster again the competitiveness i say that a lot mm-hmm. because i think it's true 
uh, they've made a renewed commitment mm -hmm. uh, to the sports uh, of basketball, both the men's and women. Uh, that is only going to enhance them. I think being a part of our brand and our conference, I think they would also tell you, mm -hmm. helps them sort of clarify what their story is, um, you know, with their respective student athletes, which maybe they didn't have in their current conference. So I, I think it's a win all the way around. Now, with a lot of the realignment, obviously we've gotten news of the opposite where we know Gonzaga will be leaving the, the WCC in a couple of years, uh, along with Washington State and Oregon State. For the rest of the, the the member institutions, full member institutions, have there been conversations about what the league looks forward moving, what the league is moving forward? And even with Grand Canyon and Seattle, who are, are not quite here yet, have there, what conversations have been had with them about uh, what, what does the league look like in a few years? Yeah, those conversations regarding membership and membership expansion have really been ongoing for the past year, and they continue. Um, there are different levels of frequency depending on you know what happens. And with the departure of Gonzaga, I would say that those discussions amongst our members, and I'm seeing you know coaches, athletics directors, and the ultimate decision makers, our presidents, mm -hmm. are pretty much ongoing because we have to. Uh, like many conferences around the country, just uh, have an eye on, you know, what you can anticipate in terms of movement and to make sure that we continue to stay stable as a conference uh, so that we can move forward in the way that we would like. When, when looking at the conference tournament for the WCC, uh, obviously had a, a longstanding relationship with the Orleans Arena and, and the venue out there. And, and I've gone many times and it's always fun to see how, how busy it is and how packed it is. And uh, has there been discussion about any alterations to, to where that's going to be? Or does it feel like we're kind of locked in on, on that as a location? Because uh, you know, it's, it's been there, what, like nine, ten years now at this point, I think? Actually, it's six, 16. 16, it's been six, 16 years. Oh, what do I yeah. know? 16 uh, years. No, it's <laughs> 2009. It's yeah. a long time. Yeah, 16 years. And, you know, the Orleans uh, Arena has been a great partner uh, with the WCC and provided, you know, this conference with a lot of magic moments. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the staff there and the way that uh, – you know, our partnership has worked. It's just been really beneficial. Our contract is up uh, at the end of, uh, you know, this next year, the, the tournament. And, you know, we're exploring options about what the future looks like and uh, seeing what uh, options are out there, including going back to the Orleans. So we haven't decided yet, uh, you, know, um, you know, which direction we'll go. But, uh, you know, whichever direction it goes, you know, they've just been a terrific, terrific uh, relationship for us to have. Commissioner Jackson discusses the WCC's new media rights deal, what that might look like in the future, as well as the impact NIL and the transfer portal have had on his role as the commissioner. We're going to get to all that in just a second. But first, folks, let's talk about game time because there's just two weeks until the start of the college basketball season is officially here. There's nothing better then the atmosphere of a Gonzaga basketball game, no matter where it is played, the anticipation, the energy, all of that great stuff. I'm so, so excited for this upcoming season. And thankfully, there's this ticketing app, Game Time, that helps you get great tickets at a great price. And it's not even just for sports. Game Time has tickets for all events, music, theater, comedy, and more. And right now, you can use Game Time's new feature called Game Time Picks, which filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so that you don't have to waste your time looking through thousands of different tickets on multiple different ticketing platforms. Whether it's Game Time's ticketing coverage, their lowest price guarantee, or the panoramic views from your seat in the app, Game Time has you covered. And if you're a Gonzaga fan on the East Coast or you're planning to make that trip out to the Madison Square Garden to check out Gonzaga vs. UConn, you can get two tickets in the upper level for $98 a piece right now on Game Time. That is hundreds of dollars less than you're going to find them on other outlets. They also have a super deal right now. Two tickets on the baseline in the lower bowl. $211 per ticket, folks. There are other tickets in that same section going for $500 plus. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets right now with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Terms do apply. Download the Game Time app today. What time is it? It's game time. 
All right, folks, segment three, Stoney Patton still locked on Zach's podcast. Closing up our conversation here with the commissioner of the West Coast Conference, Stu Jackson, talking about the new media rights deal, talking about whether streaming services could be a part of their new deal after this one is expired, especially with Gonzaga out the door. We know they're going to renegotiate. What might that look like? Talk about that. We talk about the impact, the NIL transfer portal uh, and the house settlement coming down the pipeline, what all that means for his role as the commissioner of the conference. All those conversations here to close out the show. Check it out. We saw the other, uh, it was also announced the other day, just like the expansion of like the TV package like between ESPN, CBS Sports, and then um, also, I think it was also, um, I saw the FS1 like games on there as well. Just kind of talk about like where the the conference is on, on kind of like the TV contract front and like what, e- obviously like ESPN has kind of been the flagship for the WCC for a long, long time. And what the, how, uh, what is it, what does that look like? Obviously we know it's bigger this year. And so what is it kind of those combos going forward? Yeah, no, the, good question. I mean, our current media rights agreement is up in 2027. Mm-hmm. Um, and at some point in the interim, we'll begin talks with uh, uh, ESPN and CBS because they have that right. Uh, we also have to, with the departure of Gonzaga, mm-hmm. inform them that we've had a membership change, which, mm-hmm. you know, anyone is, uh as cable would know that yeah. or, or <laughs> in front of a laptop, but you know, and they could reopen those negotiations. So, um, you know, we expect that, uh, you know, when all said and done uh, in 2027, that we'll have a new media deal mm-hmm. and hopefully at a level that, um, you know, helps propel us forward, um, you know, in terms of just the resources for the conference that uh, will, will be improved. Yes. Speaking on media rights, like we saw some a little bit of controversy with the, the schools that went from the Pac-12 to the Big Ten, and they were unable to have their games on on TV on the Big Ten network, and there was some some stress about that. I know the Mountain West had some issues with some of that as well. Like how how much in, a, in an ever changing media kind of just industry with streaming becoming popular and things of that nature, how much has that conversation about what we want to do next? Does it involve looking at maybe some some options that haven't always been at the top of people's minds, whether it's something like the CW Network or a, a streaming platform uh, where the games would be directly there, Peacock or, or something of that nature. How how much has that been considered for the WCC uh, at, at this point? Yeah, it really would be prudent on our part mm-hmm. to make sure that we consider it. And, you know, the what you just described are the mm-hmm. cocktail mm-hmm. Uh, media rights packages yeah. that are inclusive of uh, both linear cable mm-hmm. and streaming. And, if you look at recent deals that have taken place, uh, by way of an example, in the Big East Conference, yeah. um, it was a, a cocktail of those different platforms because in this day and age, you have a viewership that you know watches games on different platforms. Um, each of those different types of platforms give you a you know tiered level of access, and some combination of those access of that access and those tiers, you know hopefully we'll give you an audience that's better than the one you had before. So um, we'll explore that. Um, we think that the WCC has terrific value. And, um, you know, but it's incumbent upon us to make sure by the time we sit down and talk about those media rights that we have good premium content to take to the table because that is what, based on what we hear from broadcast partners, is their main focus. They want the good games. Yeah. They want the, you know, the, the, the rivalry matchups. They want the premier contact games, and it's up to us to deliver. And so often, like, we, obviously, we focus on men's basketball because that is a lot of times where, obviously, the fellows come from and everything else. But there's also been, like, we have programs throughout the conference that are national championship-level uh, teams, regardless of the sport. And and there have been some changes, like, at the top at some of the programs. I think of, like, Pepperdine, uh, Tanner Gardner taking over as AD. As new leadership is coming in, like what's how does the conversation go with those leaders as they kind of become part of this conversation and what you're looking for and what the conference is looking for as a whole? No, they've been great additions. I mean, you have uh, Kimya Massey down at USD. You've got Heather Owen at Santa Clara. Yeah. Obviously, you mentioned Tanner. Um, you know, those conversations are, are a good exchange because – just as commissioner, I need to listen because all of them bring different ideas, new ideas. Uh, they've all had depth of experience in other conferences and with other schools. And, um, 
you know, so far I'm just really encouraged about the aggressive nature of of the new athletics directors that are coming to the league. And they're going to be fine additions to our conference and really help steer us, uh, you know, in directions that we need to go. Well, conference realignment obviously has been a big part of the college basket or college sports space, but but also we've seen the transfer portal and NIL become these these huge. I mean dramatic changes. I was speaking to uh, the, the USD staff earlier, and they were saying that college basketball in the last five years has changed more than it did like 40 years before that. It feels like just with those two massive yeah. things. And, and and now you have this house settlement and, and these huge changes to the sport in terms of compensation and player autonomy and things of that nature. How much has that impacted your role in terms of working with coaches and working with athletic directors and, and working with these programs to help them be the most competitive that they can in a landscape that's, that's dramatically different than it was even five years ago. Yeah, no, it's at the top of the list. And, um, you know, what has happened with all of this volatility and all the areas that you just described, um, you know, decisions are being made based on a financial basis, mm -hmm. whether you're at a student athlete level with NIL or the transfer mm -hmm. portal, as you mentioned, the house settlement both affects individual institutions as well as the conference office. So, you know, the decisions that are incumbent upon all of us are not easy, uh, particularly at the institutional level. It's something that we talk about uh, a lot. We'll continue to talk about next week and into November with the residents. Uh, this is tough stuff, but, you know, as commissioner, it's also incumbent upon us to make sure that we are operating at the conference level as efficiently as possible to help, you know, the stability of the conference. Commissioner, thank you so much. That was fantastic. No. Really appreciate having you. having you on. All right. Yeah. Looking forward to a fantastic year. All right. Huge thank you, of course, to Stu, Stu Jackson for coming on to the show, talking to Zach and I about all things WCC hoops as we get ready for the start of the season. We're about two weeks away from college basketball being back. I am so excited. We got more fun stuff coming your way here on Locked on Zags. We're going to continue our player preview series, talking about every player on Gonzaga's roster, their history, their best and worst case scenarios for this upcoming season, expected role production, future after their time at Gonzaga. Got many of those still to come. I think we've done six out of 11, so we still have about half of them left. We're going to do some bold predictions. We're going to continue to talk about conference realignment, the new Pac-12, what that means for Gonzaga. We also got more of these interviews. I spoke with 20 different WCC players, seven different WCC coaches at Media Day on Thursday. We're going to hear some more conversations. We'll talk. Uh, we'll, we'll play some of that audio from the Randy Bennett interview, the interviews with Mitchell Saxon, Augustus Marcelonis, and Luke Barrett. We also got a chance to talk to Adama Ball at Santa Clara, Cedric Coward at Washington State, Wayne Tinkle, the head coach at Oregon State, Chris Gerlison at San Francisco, Herb Sendek at Santa Clara, and many, many more. It was a really fun day. Looking forward to getting all those interviews out to you all in the next couple of weeks as well. I want to thank all of you so much for making the show your first listen or your first watch of the day. Remind you to join the Locked on Zags Discord channel if you have not done so yet. It is free to join. There's a link in the show notes on audio and video platforms. You can follow on social media as well, Locked on Zags on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next. We'll be back Monday uh, as we continue to have these conversations and get ready for the start of the season. Until then, as always, go Zags.